Hey there Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. My name's Josie Olford and this week we are talking about the T.S. Eliot Prize. Last week, Joelle Taylor, a legend in the UK spoken word scene, won the T.S. Eliot Prize for her collection. I will make the uh, book cover appear here because I'm pretty sure YouTube won't like me saying the collection title because it does sound very rude. I have ordered the book and I will be filming a reaction slash review of it but for now I got curious and I wanted to know what is the T.S. Eliot prize? In this video I'm going to run through what the prize is, who T.S. Eliot was, the history of the prize and we'll get into the nerdy technicalities of the submission guidelines as well. But before we go any further, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment down below your favourite poetry collection. The engagement really helps small creators like me get found. And while we're on the subject, why not follow me on social media? I am at Josie Olford Poet on all the things. The T.S. Eliot Prize is an annual prize for the best new poetry collection published in the UK or Ireland. Former Poet Laureate Andrew Motion has described it as the prize most poets want to win. This is probably because it is the most valuable annual poetry competition in the UK. This year, first place prize was £25,000 and the nine other shortlisted poets won £1,500 each. It is also one of the few prizes where the judging panel is entirely made up of established poets. This year, the judges were Glyn Maxwell, Caroline Bird and Safar Keneal. The prize was started by the Poetry Book Society not to be confused with the Poetry Society. In 1993, to celebrate their 40th anniversary in honour of the founding poet, T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot was a poet, essayist, publisher, playwright, literary critic and editor. He is considered one of the 20th century's major poets and was a huge part of the modernist movement in poetry. He was born in St. Louis, Missouri, but moved to the UK and credits the literary and poetic traditions of both countries in shaping his writing. His most famous works are The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, published in 1915, and of course, The Wasteland, which was published in 1922. Happy 100th birthday to The Wasteland, woo! Side note, if you have never read any T.S. Eliot or modernist poetry in general, I definitely recommend starting with The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. It's a cracker and is actually one of my favourite poems of all time. The Wasteland is great too, but it is a huge book long poem and can be quite challenging. But personally, I like it like that and you might like it too. He also worked at Farber and Farber, publishing poets such as W.H. Auden and Ted Hughes. The Poetry Book Society, or PBS, was founded in 1953 by Eliot and his friends, including Sir Basil Blackwell, to propagate the art of poetry. The PBS is basically a book club, making quarterly book recommendations for its members and publishing the PBS Bulletin. And until 2016, the Poetry Book Society ran the T.S. Eliot Prize. The T.S. Eliot Foundation took over running the prize in 2016 and the PBS is no longer a charity and is now run by In Press, based in Newcastle. It is basically a poetry book subscription service. It looks pretty cool and if you've got the money, it sounds nice. I've put the link in the description. And also, if any sh poetry sugar parents want to buy me a membership, that would be great too. I'm just saying. This is all very well and good so far, but I wanted to know more. So I went and had a look at the submission guidelines for the prize. I found the guidelines for the 2021 prize, which is the one that was just announced, but I don't imagine that these guidelines will change much for upcoming submissions. I'm just going to read the highlights, but if you want to read in more detail, I'll put the link in the description. Eligibility. First publication in the UK may include simultaneous publication within a period of one year in other countries. 
this basically means that whilst uh, it might be first published in the UK in 2021, it can also be published in another country as long as it's not outside of a year in between those publication dates. So basically, if it was first published in the US in 2018, but not published until the, in the UK until 2021, then it would not be eligible for the prize. A collection must be the work of one poet. Anthologies and volumes of collected or selected work will not be eligible. A posthumous collection will only be eligible if it is published within one year of the poet's death. At least 80% of the poems in the collection must not have been published before in book form. This is particularly noteworthy because it's talking about in book form, published in a collection. It does not mean being published in journals and um, magazines and stuff like that. If you want to understand about how to get published in journals and magazines, I've actually made a video about that and I'll make it pop up here. Books which contain more than 20% translations or versions, imitations or any poetry inspired by the work of one or more other writers will not be eligible. Percentages should be calculated on the total number of lines of poetry in a book. This is an interesting one. Um, I think obviously like you couldn't do a translation of someone else's book and then get win the prize yourself. Um, and also it has to be, you know, published in the UK. But I think this is interesting about not being um, attributed to or inspired by other things. A friend of mine, Bridget, they've been on the channel before, um, has recently released a book uh, called Chewing Gum, which is um, a queer rereading of the Grease movies, which if you haven't bought this book, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, it is joyous, but for one, it's a chat book and not long enough, um, we'll get to that. But it wouldn't be, eligible I imagine because it is not it is focused on someone else's work maybe I don't know interesting if anyone is watching this from the T.S. Eliot uh, prize and you know the answer to this uh, please let me know I guess like the other thing I'm interested in is maybe like um, Beowulf and the translation of that that wouldn't count would it so if anyone is here, if anyone is viewing this from the T.S. Eliot Prize, please comment below and let us know. A book shall be defined as having at least 48 pages. Anything shorter is a pamphlet. Entries from individual poets of their own work will not be accepted. So this basically means that you cannot submit your own work. It is something that your publisher has to submit for you. This also means that if your book is self-published, it is not eligible for the prize. You have to have um, been published by a publisher who will submit it for you. Work can be submitted by the publisher in page proof, typescript, photocopy or finished book form, but only in printed form, not a PDF. The last date for submissions will be on five o'clock on Thursday, the 29th of July. Basically, because the prize is for all of the books that are published in 2021, but the deadline for submission is just over halfway through the year, um, they are allowing people to submit the poetry collection in its unpublished form. So it could be, you know, in proof pages or however uh, the format is, but it must be posted, not um, emailed. So basically, if you were getting published in December 2021 and you wanted your um, poetry collection to be submitted for that, you would have to have a copy of it up and together by July, even if your publication date was later. And if your publication date was in December 2021, but you didn't have it together by um, July earlier that year, you could not submit it for the next year. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to push your publication date until January 2022, and then you can do it that way. Hope that makes sense. So, the shortlist. A shortlist of books selected for the prize will be announced in late October 2021. The list will comprise not more than 10 books. 
Books which have been submitted in manuscript or proof form should also be provided as finished copies if they are given places on the shortlist. Publishers of shortlisted titles should provide a further 12 finished copies for promotional purposes. So, reproduction of poems. Between one and three poems from each of the shortlisted titles will be reproduced on press releases, the T.S. Eliot Prize website, in social media and in press releases and emails for the purposes of marketing the relevant book, the readings or the prize itself. The judging. There will be three poets on the 2021 judging panel. Each judge will have one vote. In the event of a tied vote, the chair will have the casting vote. The final judging will take place and the prize will be awarded in mid-January 2022. So going back to that vote thing, a uh, big fan of it. Um, the idea is, is that you've got three people who will read all of the like shortlist and then they will pick their favourites. And the only way you're going to get a tie is if the judges each want a different book to win. So like you one collection would have one vote you'd have three collections with one vote each and if that is the case then the chair which this year was glenn maxwell um would choose and have the casting vote so chances are the collection that they picked uh would be that one part of me is curious to know what the votes were i reckon caroline bird would have gone for joelle taylor anyway but who knows? I'm really excited to read this collection as well. So there you go. That is the T.S. Eliot Prize. As I said at the beginning of the video, I have ordered the book and will be reading it and sharing my review here soon. Subscribe to catch that. Have you read this collection? Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. And if you haven't read this collection, I will settle for you telling me your favorite poetry collection that you've read so far. If you found this video interesting or useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have the funds, you can buy me a coffee or join me on Patreon. We have badges. The links to do both are in the description down below. If you've watched this video and you're thinking, wow, Josie is cool and incredibly good looking. I would love to see more of her on my phone or laptop. You can follow me on social media. I am at Josie Alford Poet on all the things. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Bye.